said, I don't have to tell you that our guest tonight has had a prolific career in movies, television, and on stage, whether you know her as Tina's mom and what's love got to do with it, or Whitney's, <laughs> or Whitney's mom and the preacher's wife, or Aunt Helen in the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, or of course, Ruby Johnson from Blackish. <laughs> Jennifer Lewis has done it all. She has played literally hundreds of roles on television, in movies, and on stage. And if you have seen her work, and if you've seen enough of it, you know that she is not just a gifted actor, but she is also a very talented singer and dancer as well. And I can attest that to this day, she can kick higher than most of the Radio City Rockettes. <laughs> not gonna lie. Now, you may remember that Jennifer's memoir, The Mother of Black Hollywood, was released to rave reviews in 2017. In it, she shares the story of her journey from Kinlock, Missouri, to Broadway and to Hollywood, and also the battles that she fought along the way, including being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Um, her new book, Walking in My Joy in These Streets, is a collection of essays <laughs> where she encourages all of us to live our lives to the fullest. And she's including stories that are sometimes sobering, often hilarious, and as you might expect, full of cuss words. <laughs> <laughs> so before I bring her out, let me just very quickly say um, that, again, you're welcome to take pictures. We do ask that there would be no flash photography, please, but do take pictures. And all of that said, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a very warm Philadelphia welcome for the mother of Black Hollywood and everybody's auntie, Jennifer Lewis. Bet you better turn, is it on? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I thought that was fucked up. I'm like, <laughs> sit your asses down. What you doing? Sit down. <laughs> oh my God. You don't want to hear no cussing. You better get the fuck out of here now. I wish a bitch would. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Good to be in Philly. It's good to be in Philly. <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up, bitch. <laughs> you and 10 million other fucking people. <laughs> well, I think it's three. No, it's about a billion now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, nigga, you done gone crazy. <laughs> hey, you think you at the movies? You think you're watching television? I bet you better shut the fuck up. I don't, you, what, you think you're gonna talk back to me all night? I got the memory of a fucking fruit fly. I'll start a sentence, I won't know where I am. Now, is there a psychologist in the fucking <laughs> Where? Now, you are gonna keep, you're gonna keep the, uh, the record. I will start a million stories and forget where I am so you might want to remember. My shrink never wrote nothing down. He was a bad bitch. <laughs> I got uh, somebody I want to say hello to before I start. Where's Lori's mama? Raise your hand. Oh. Okay, let me tell you who this white woman is. Waving and shit. She's so happy. <laughs> you know I'm playing with you. No, so cute boots. Shut your fucking mouth. This motherfucker. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't curse like that, y'all. I try, y'all. It's just fucked up. I, I've been cussing since I was five. They say, hello, little Jenny Lewis. I go, fuck you. <laughs> five years old. Just cussing. Oh.
Now don't don't start no talking and shit, Mom. Don't tell me. You know you you're a minority in here. <laughs> don't start no shit, Mom. <laughs> I love your daughter. Uh, this is Lori's mother. Ah, damn, sit still. Who's that? Goddamn drive by. I got some fucking <laughs> banging shit. Uh, Laura, uh, her daughter's name is Lori, and Lori was one of the writers on Blackish. And she, ah, uh, she was my heart. And uh, hmm, I loved her so much. And you know, no matter how fabulous we are, we get nervous too, right? But then it just became a thing. After every scene, <laughs> I'd run back there and go, well, was it funny? <laughs> she said, no, it wasn't. <laughs> every time, <laughs> she said, absolutely not. I said, damn. So she became my new nigga. <laughs> Didn't know you had one of them. Did you? I'm sorry, Mom, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, and I want to introduce you to one more person. She is the editor of Walking in My Joy. This woman spent a lot of time with me, and she's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, come here, baby. I can't believe she's still here. I got dead bodies everywhere. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna sit down and be a good girl. We're gonna do a little Q&A later, okay? Yeah. All right, I'm here. And I'm glad to be here. Yeah. I'll just you know, hold I'm, this, I'm, I'm I'll, I'll just hold this. I'm it's gonna go good. out on a limb here, um, but I'm I'm thinking they almost like you in here. <laughs> Just a little. All right. So I want to give you an opportunity to talk about your social activism work in just a moment, but I want to start with SVN because <laughs> as sad as we were to see the end of Blackish and what an end it was, it was only a matter of a few weeks before we were able to see you again on a new show on Showtime called I Love That For You, which is kind of a takeoff on QVC, which we all know about here in the Philadelphia area. And you are a very different kind of boss lady than Ruby Johnson yes. in this show. Tell us a little bit about the new show. Listen, the bottom line, y'all, is on Showtime. It really is a great show. It really, I'm so, I'm so excited. It's my best work. I play an ice queen. Her name is Patricia Cochran. And um, they had in the script that her name was Patricia Conkin. So I asked the writers, I said, what is her background? I said, is she married? They said, no. I said, well, baby, ain't no black woman named Conkin. <laughs> Since it was Conkin, it brought out Cochran. So I said, just let her uh, be Johnny Cochran's cousin. Uh, so when they called me, I mean, I just finished Blackish. Y'all not get ready to retire. I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, and after COVID, I got a little scared. I wanted to go home where I knew people loved me. Because we didn't know about this thing when it first happened. Everybody in the world contemplated their deaths. We just didn't know. But here we are. We made it. So when they called, when they called, I said, uh, they said Molly Shannon. I said, you had me at hello. <laughs> <laughs> because if nothing else, I knew it would be fun. Anybody smells their armpits? Or <laughs> and kisses, tongue kisses a tree, <laughs> and slams herself into some chairs with Whitney Houston. I'll be right there. <laughs> and Vanessa Bear, who's the star and creator of the show, she is, um, shut up, y'all. I can't concentrate. Where we at, girl? I'm kidding, kidding. 
Did y'all just get here back there? Did you just get here? What time did your fucking ticket say? <laughs> like my mama used to say, sit your ass down. <laughs> y'all know that's how they said it. In church, sit your ass down. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. I stole that joke from Bette Mittler. <laughs> when I was touring with her in 1983, if somebody come in, especially if they won the front row, Bette would be in the middle of a ballad. You know, look at what time your tickets say. <laughs> oh my God, I'd be back there going, wow. <laughs> so anyway, the end of I Love That For You is uh, I didn't come up with Vanessa Bayer. You know, she's younger and uh, Vanessa's in her 40s, Molly's in her 50s, I'm in my 60s. And uh, let me just say this. Y'all, I'm, I'm having sex in this show. <laughs> I said, I said, y'all wait till I am 65 years old to make me a porn star. <laughs> ah, damn. But honey, them, they bring them young boys on there. <laughs> I said, now you just lay there, I'll do the rest. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, y'all. <laughs> oh, God. After Weinstein, all that dumb shit happened, hold on. <laughs> Hollywood went on. You know, lockdown, they had to have HR meetings, right? Oh no, honey, Disney, Disney don't play, honey. So they had an HR meeting and I stood up, I said, why didn't you just bring me into an office? Why you got everybody else here to give them, you know, you can't have this. I said, you mean I can't shake my titties over there by the <laughs> And when I, whenever I say something inappropriate, I say, I say, don't call HR, bitch. Because I fucked all of them already, you know. She went there. I said, I fucked everybody there. up there. So you going up there. <laughs> but anyway, go, go watch it. It's called I Love That For You. And it's a fun show. We, uh, we're waiting to find out if we've been picked up. We'll see. So now for something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, fuck. You gotta love me, right? Oh my God. Y'all, I've been acting like this since I was a child. Ain't nothing I can do. I'm on my medication. I don't know what's wrong. That's hilarious. I love doing that. Somebody I did Lincoln Center in New York, sold out. And I cussed, oh, no, I saw it, honey, don't applaud everything, because I'm gonna lose it. I'm at. I'm at Lincoln Center. I'm in the middle, because you know, that middle runs again. And I'm singing Shirley Horn. So here's to life and every joy it brings. And this girl got up, because I'd been out there for five hours, which we'll be in here for five hours too. And I cussed everybody, everybody out in the audience, just cussed them out, did that same kind of shit. <laughs> and Bette Mittler was there too. And here she comes in the middle of that ballad. Cause she had to pee, y'all. I've been out there so long. That bitch came creeping, creeping. 
because you had on like clogs or something. I was like, bitch, what are you, Dutch? <laughs> so I was gone, and everybody was praying for her <laughs> as she walked. They were praying. Everybody knew, because she thought she could go in the middle of my song. So here to life, bitch. <laughs> she ran. <laughs> and I ran all the way out the <laughs> All right, so what's the next question? All right. <laughs> all right, God. So there's this book you wrote. Yes, I wrote a book. <laughs> And, and in it, you talk about using your talents to promote the issues that you care about. Yeah. Voting rights, yes. um, climate change, holding Donald Trump accountable. And in fact, <laughs> in fact, <laughs> you say, you say in the book, which is called Walking in My Joy, you say that you believe that if there were more joy in the world, that people might not have taken Donald Trump so seriously. Can you unpack that a little bit? Listen, guys, you know what happened. The, the man, you know that, uh, what was the name of that? P apprentice, some shit, the show. They, uh, yeah, you know, The Apprentice. He, ah, y'all. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't want to talk about that motherfucker tonight. Well, let's. But let me say. Wait a minute, let me say this though. Let me say this, and I'm I'm going to tell you the truth because you're a really good audience. I slept with him. <laughs> don't judge me. That motherfucker had money. I remember Stormy Daniels, the hooker, that said he had a dick like a mushroom. She was right. I'm so good. But no, y'all know, y'all know I'm into my activism. And let me tell you something tonight. After Roe versus Wade, you know all them political songs I sing, that's over. I'm getting ready to talk. We must not divide. Y'all, those motherfuckers are coming for everybody's rights. You gotta call everybody you know. I don't give a fuck, call everybody you know. Make sure they're registered. You meet somebody that says my vote don't count, kill him. <laughs> Stab that bitch. <laughs> I asked them backstage, I said, can I cuss? They said, it's a free lie. I said, you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, I don't have to tell you anything, you know. These motherfuckers are serious. Don't fuck up. We have to fight. We're standing on the shoulders of the shoulders of the shoulders. Look at a picture of Mandela. His shoulders were fragile. We're standing on them. Make him proud. Sojourner, sometimes when I can't get up in the morning, I'm not depressed anymore like I was the first 35 years of my life. But sometimes I have to tug on Sojourner's skirt to get up. Y'all be careful. Don't fuck up. This is their last stance. They want this fucking country just to be theirs. After we built it! Yeah. 
Now, I'm going to say one last thing about this, and I want to talk about you later. Let's leave all that bullshit back here. Now, I just left D.C. Couldn't even look at the Capitol. Those fucking roaches. Let me tell you something. The man that took them around on the tour the day before and said, now y'all go in this window. Now, don't worry about that door because somebody's going to open it for you. Okay, y'all, I want you to climb the wall so they can see it. But what he forgot to tell them, <laughs> that the windows in that building are not the same quality as the ones in your trailers. He said, wait, I lost that thought. What did I say? Yeah. Ain't nobody ask y'all. I asked one fucking person. Everybody talking. How the fuck I'm on here? Yeah, and uh, they didn't know, dumbasses. They were going to have to go get a police barricade to break that bitch while somebody filmed your stupid ass. <sighs> go on, let them take it over. I'm going to be honest, because I got a lot of friends in Congress and senators. <sighs> Remind me right after this, I got some good news I want to share with y'all. Where was I? Shut the sheep. <laughs> what I say? Turn that, take that damn mask off for me. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, but I still, I, I'm not going to lie to y'all, I still forgot where I was going. <laughs> no, don't laugh. It, it's kind of not like funny. It really isn't. I, my short-term memory. I talked to my best friend today, who's an um, Oscar, Emmy, Grammy, uh, no, he's a Tony, Grammy, Emmy, five-time Oscar nominee. He wrote Hairspray. Yeah, he, a, a Mark Shaman is his name. He's my best friend. And he's losing his memory, too. Mm. So it's kind of fucked up. But you know what? You better age gracefully. Yeah. Shit, the fact that, I, fact that I can uh, get your cameras out right quick. <laughs> the fact that I can still, ready? Yeah. Do this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Told you. You do it. Get y'all, come out, do it again. You get up and do it. But y'all, you know, we, we just got to, did I not finish your story? What? Then shut up. Go back. She's so, so cute. She's like, damn. It's crazy. Okay. Go on, boo. You <laughs> mentioned COVID. Yeah. You mentioned depression. And we all know that COVID has taken a huge toll on our collective mental health. I'd like you to talk a little bit about the importance of addressing our mental health, particularly for the black community. Don't start. Now you better listen. I want it to be well. Back in the day, see, they didn't have words for what, for bipolar. They might have, but no, it was, certainly wasn't popular. So nobody knew what was wrong with me. I was a little crazy Jenny. Shit, I felt special. I had something in front of my neck. There go crazy Jenny. Well, I was manic. I'd cry at night, listen to Mahalia Jackson's song. Soon I will be done. All those sad ass songs. I 
I just thought it was life. It's not. I turned 33 years old, good friend of mine, saw me have a nervous breakdown because my best friend died from AIDS, and not only him, but I had about 200 people I knew. The, the whole cast, the whole uh, chorus of Dream Girls died, and they just dropped like flies, and that fucking Reagan did nothing. <sighs> That's when I really became an activist. I did a thing called Divas for Dollars. We, we, uh, well, you, you couldn't possibly know what I'm talking about. No, I'm kidding. No, 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 listen, and we, we as Broadway uh, performers, we would go to gay clubs and sing one song and then go to another and pass the pot. So when I got out to Hollywood, you know, I was trained in the theater. And I was taught to reach the back row with my voice so that the person in the back would know what I was doing. When I got to Hollywood, <laughs> I started that kind of act, and the director said, cut, what the fuck is that? Because <laughs> I was like, and then you come out and, uh, he said, no, baby, the camera's over there. <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So it was all because I didn't know who I was. Clawing at the void of life. Which way do I go? What do I do? Well, when my friend told me I might be sick, of course my response was, bitch, I'm Jennifer Lewis. Ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> but there was. So I went in, she diagnosed me right away. When she said bipolar, I said, by what, bitch? <laughs> I said, I'm bicoastal, I'm bisexual, but what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so not. If you read the mother of black Hollywood, there's a chapter called Dick Diva. <laughs> oh my God, my favorite chapter. No, listen. Uh, Listen to me very carefully right now. Somebody out here is mentally ill. I think it's one out of, shit, it's probably one out of three now. <sighs> one out of three have been molested. Mm. Pastor of my church molested me. My mother was in love with him. So when I told her, oh, come on, Jesus. She closed the door and it was never discussed again. There were no Oprahs back then. There was no nine one fucking one. Oh, there was nobody to call. Oh, Jesus. I got him though, y'all. Ooh, I got that motherfucker. I called him, I was about 30, I don't know, about two years into therapy. Mm. And I said, he said, hello, this wasn't no cell phones, he didn't know it was me. He said, hello, Jennifer, so good, we're so proud of you on television. I said, it ain't that kind of call, motherfucker. Uh, all right. I went the fuck off. I said, you hang up this phone. I will fly back to St. Louis and blow that fucking church up with you in it. So he apologized. He did. But when he touched me, he didn't penetrate me on me, just leaned over and kissed me. And this was the question I had asked him. You know how you get in the car and you get to ride with the pastor to go to a visiting church? <sighs> I turned to him at one point. I said, Pastor Hurt, you think I can be a star? And that's when that motherfucker pulled over, felt my breast, tried to kiss me, his tongue, his funky breath. I'll never forget it. Ooh! 
you can get another toe. <laughs> Stepped on that bitch. Look at, I mean, no, I don't call. I don't call. Uh, okay, you are right. <laughs> Where was I in the molestation? Wait, wait, hold it. Where was I? Him kissing me? Yes, the breast. And, and, and that's all he did, but it lasted about... Mm. Wait, hold on, let me tell you. Lasted about maybe 10 seconds. And in those 10 seconds, that motherfucker not only took my career because of what I had asked him, he took away my mother, oh God, and God in 10 fucking seconds. This bitch. Well, I got his ass though. You leave that goddamn cane a little further out there. <laughs> 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 a fucking cane. <laughs> oh, God, Jesus Christ. I, I am a fool. Oh, my God. My friend said, bitch, are you taking your medication? <laughs> I said, honey, it ain't that much medication in the world. My personality will bust through anything. But here, here's the story. Now, that happened. It was horrible. I held it in. And when I got to therapy, I wanted to, sh I wanted to shut my mother off because it, it was just too hard. It was too hard to bring that up, but you gotta tell somebody. And if you don't, if they don't listen, tell somebody else. And if they don't listen, tell somebody else. But you tell and stop eating yourself to death, drinking yourself to death, getting high yourself to death. Ain't nothing wrong with getting a little smoke. But anyway, <laughs> I'm funny motherfucker, ain't I? She's like, God damn, <laughs> Tell somebody and stop yourself from hurting yourself. Mm. Yeah. Stop it. When that cousin is up on the table at the family picnic or reunion with his pants down, acting a damn fool, stop playing spades for one minute and See if he's okay. Yeah. I wanted to be well, all this success, all this talent, crying every night. You reach out to one another. Reach out about three times and then leave them the fuck alone because they ain't going to come around until they're ready. Hmm. You hear me? Don't try to save nobody. You can't. I tried. <sighs> you cannot save other people. And believe it or not, other people's happiness ain't none of your business. <laughs> and don't think you're going to be happy when you get something you want or go somewhere you want. You got to be happy on your way to happy. Uh -huh. And how do you get there, Miss Lewis? I wonder. How'd you get so fucking happy? <laughs> hmm. I did the work. Worked my ass off. Laid on that couch. For hmm. I laid on that couch for 20 years. I had to be re-raised. I was a baby of seven. Time I came along, my mother was tired. 26 years old with seven kids. <sighs> but she was a bad bitch, too. And you can imagine the, is that a fucking phone? 
Yeah, a bitch wanna die you. now, huh, bitch? Get the fuck out. <laughs> bitch wanna die. Got the killer bitch blues. Now listen. Listen to me. Listen. Where was I, mama? Shh. What? Bad bitch. She, she got off welfare. She went and got a certificate. She became a nurse's aide. She got tired of white people coming to her house, our house, judging shit. Oh, yeah, back in the day, you got welfare, they come and make sure the man wasn't present. <laughs> Tore up black families. <sighs> Quick story, because you're a good audience. White man came to my mother's door, and the woman that she was scrubbing toilets at her house, cleaning her house, had given her a piano. <gasps> I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that fucking piano. Mm. He peered in the house, came a little bit in the door, piano was there. Hmm. He said, nigga, how can you afford a piano? <laughs> well, wrong bitch. <laughs> I stand there with my mouth and <laughs> my thumb in my mouth. That man said that I went cross-eyed. <laughs> I said, oh, fuck, you done fucked up now. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a bathroom, so we had to pee in a bucket and we, you know, take care of business outside in the outhouse. Mm. Stay with me on this man. I used to have to put my little booty on frozen wood to shit. In 19 below zero in St. Louis, Missouri. And to add insult to injury, it was across the street from the school and I was teased every day. Them bitches ain't teasing me now. <laughs> I got five fucking bathrooms, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Better have my money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going back. Where was I to? Shh, shh, shh. What was it? Uh, one person that really knows what. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on now. I can't hear. Okay. You just talk about the white yes. Yes, yes, yes. So he peers in and goes, how'd you, I can't believe that shit. How can you afford a, 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 a piano, nigga? That's something you never forget. My mama went back there and got that bucket of piss. <laughs> Gangster. God goddamn. Whew. She came back and threw that shit all over him. I stood there like this. <laughs> what I didn't tell you is there was some toilet paper in there, too. <laughs> that shit was all over <laughs> I was like, ah! My mother said, don't bring your ass over here no more and close the door. <laughs> now, she didn't have no affection. Who the fuck had time for it? She's working, cleaning white people's houses all fucking day, coming home exhausted, had to iron all our clothes, wash them, hang them on the clothesline, wring them out. Mm, it was a different time. Mm. Now, all a bitch got to do is push a button. <laughs> <laughs> New world. So anyway, I have lived the American dream. Mm. I went from eating dirt <laughs> to fucking caviar. No, no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't even like that shit. When? <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I'm in Russia, yeah. On that note. Go ahead. 
What do you say we take some questions from our audience? I'm yeah. sure you've got uh, oh, some questions. Oh, there's an audience out here. I don't even know you. <laughs> um, all right. If you have a question for Jennifer, wait a just minute, a white man hand. coming, god damn it. Uh, fuck that shit. Where the fuck you going, bitch? I, run, ya! Run! <laughs> oh, shit. See one of them motherfuckers come. <laughs> Whoa, I run my ass off. Yeah. Oh god. Y'all ever see <laughs> Wait a minute. Y'all ever see that thing was it? I don't know if it was Frederick the Entertainer. Or who was that said it in the Kings of Comedy? They said, a black woman, if a black person's running, we don't ask no fucking questions. We start running. First question, and it better be a good one. Don't ask me no bullshit. I ain't got time. I got y'all right here. Don't waste the moment. No, you got Jennifer Lewis standing here. And you know I love you. You know I love you. So don't, don't waste my life. You first, Bumpkin. Talk loud. Hello, Nicole God, Ross baby. from Hands Pretty Across, Hi, Philadelphia. Honey. Thank you so much for coming to our city every time yes. you're here. Yes. Uh, many amazing African Americans have stories mm. of when they first started in their industry, their craft, and they always have a pinnacle moment where uh, a point of reference with racism and someone telling them they couldn't do or be who they are today and they overcame that obstacle. So do you have a moment, a pinnacle moment where someone told you uh, you wouldn't be able to amount to what you were or saying well, something? girl was all there. Yes. No, I, no I, you know, I gotta tell you something. I didn't run into a lot of racism walking in my joy cause I wasn't looking for it. I woke up to walk in my joy. Now, that wasn't always. Have I been called a nigga once? I was trying to make a left turn. <laughs> she going, she's sitting here going, who the fuck is that? Somebody the other night at the African American Museum got one question out, and I was gone. She was sitting, she was like, what the fuck? Talk to me. But yes, anything that happens to you, your molecular structure will keep it in you. And that's why I'm telling y'all, go down deep and get that pain. You can snatch that shit off if you want. It's going to grow back. Go down deep and get the root of your pain. Journal. Right in the morning, what are you going to do to make yourself happy today? Pick up a fucking paper and a piece of pen. It'll save your life. Instead of all that shit. Look at her shoes. Oh, you know that man left her? Shut the fuck up. And leave people alone. Stop it. It's enough of it. Don't worry. You hear me? Be nice. And tell somebody, because I'm going to tell you one thing. I gave you all my secrets. Because I know we're as sick as our secrets. Keep holding on to that shit. And stop eating so much fucking fried food. I'm not, stop it. Stop it. I am not playing. Came, went to Chicago. Every sister I saw, and some white ones, just the worn down. I went, what the fuck? I picked one up. No, no, no. I gave her a ride. She had all these heavy bags, and I, I she had the, the elephant thing going on. I said to my driver, I said, pull over. I got out the car. I said, where you going, mama? God damn. <laughs> I said, you get in this car. I'll take you home. Stop hurting yourselves. Stop. You can do it. Write it down. Every day, every night. Write it down. I got 30 summers left. Bullshit, don't get one. Come on, boy. What you got? Shh. 
So I just want to let you know that I love you, everything about you. I have been following you since I was a little girl. Uh, I saw you in Dream Girls in the cast. You were magnificent as always. But one question I want to ask you. Are you going to bring back Jackie? Please tell me Jackie is going to come back. Sit down somewhere. Y'all ready? All you got to do is say two words. Jackie's back. Here we go. Ah, ah, ah. When I point, I don't know where she's been. I, I, I don't know where she's at. All I know is, ow, ow, ow. I don't, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Come on, who's next? Don't let me forget to do. Yes, love. Uh, so obviously everyone here is a fan of your work, not just your artistry, but also at this point your work your, your novels, uh, as well as just everything you've done, the different roles that you've been in. When we think of joy, when we think of joy, the thing that we're here for, what are some of the roles that you've been in um, throughout your career that bring you joy? All of them. Every single one? Oh boy, I enjoy what I do. <laughs> Every single one of them, yeah. I don't let nobody fuck with me on set, I run that shit. All I gotta do is walk through the camera and steal the whole fucking shh. <laughs> y'all know it's true. Y'all see that y'all got the remote going, they be like, oh shit, cut your girls on, come on in there. <laughs> she on, there she is. And then woman come out of the kitchen and say, yeah, I heard that voice. <laughs> what, babe, what? Somebody in the back, hold on, boo, I'm coming for you. Okay, tell me, stand up and say. Thank you. Yeah. But I, oh, I was supposed to see in Silver Springs, but I didn't. My yeah. question to you, though, dealing with mental illness, when did you, and I apologize if it's in any of your books. It's okay. But when did you feel comfortable to kind of share it with everyone? When you didn't. When you, you know, I didn't even camp? know. They were all like, Jennifer Lewis came out. I'm like, bitch, I've been crazy all my life. <laughs> These motherfuckers just gave it a name. <laughs> I've been, I've been, girl. My sister, here's a, it's a sad story, but my sister, at the, um, at the Star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony, my sister came up to me and said, she had tears in her eyes. She has MS now. And I was praying she could make it, you know, with this fucking COVID, right? My brother has cancer and you know, I, I, I didn't want to put them on a plane because they were preconditioned. But they had watched me as a little girl run around so fucking much saying, I'm a star, I'm a star, I'm a star. I'm a star. I said, you got to come see me, get it. Come on. They did. But you, d go back to, you said. <laughs> yeah, uh, listen, I went on Oprah. I did a show. I didn't know. I still didn't know. I did a show called Bipolar Bath and Beyond. <laughs> and somebody from Jet Magazine saw me, called Oprah a little later. And then somebody called me. I was in Atlanta doing uh, one of the Medea movies, right? And somebody, I'm walking down the street and the phone rings. And I say, hello. She said, Jennifer Lewis, this is Jackie Williams from the Oprah Winfrey show. I said, bitch, how'd you get this number? <laughs> <laughs> what you got? I'm gonna get back to that. Just say it. I shed this morning like you. Come on, stop that crying. I'll slap the shit out of you. What, baby? What, baby? I wanna say, one, um, one, thank you for telling your story. Um, I suffer from PTSD from as young as six years old. Um, and you're Give him the mic. Where's the mic? For? Yeah. He done breathed all on my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 all right. Now, come on. Get to it. I, get to um, that answer. Come I on. read your book several times, listened to the audio book, uh -huh. like, about three times, and watched the interviews, like, ten times. Your story... Yeah. Helped me get through. Come on, Jesus. Um, I had a very major 
medical mm -hmm. situation happened to me in 2020, mm -hmm. and I had to be mentally um, put into a okay. institution. Okay. Um, from being drugged. I've okay. never said this publicly. Okay. Um, and you're, I had read your book before that, and I read it again and went over it. My question, one, thank you. Nice. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I hear um, you, baby. I got you. My question to you is, at this point in your life, now that you've accepted where you are with uh -huh. your mental illness, uh -huh. how, what struggles do you have now, and are they different than they were before, and yes. how do you deal with yes, them? Yes, 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 I do have a problem. Listen, oh, I got a white assistant, by the way. The black one fucked up. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Blonde blue eyes. I said, bring your ass up there for shit. My career's taking off. That motherfucker was <laughs> sitting around texting and playing in social media and shit. I said, boy, get your ass out of here. <laughs> Dumbass Nancy. When y'all read the book, there's a chapter called Dumbass Nancy. And now anything that happens that's not right, I just go, Dumbass Nancy. <laughs> I'm listening, baby. Stand up. Don't be too white, but go ahead. I'll shut up. You, you know I'm playing. Stop it. Go ahead. <laughs> Shh, let the white lady speak. Before <laughs> she call the motherfuckers from the Capitol. Oh, my God. Shut up. Shut up. I'm coming. What happened? What the fuck was the question? Oh, 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 yeah, wait, I'm coming. It's time for a white person to wait. Hold on a minute, shut up. Leave her alone, say something, I'll kill you over her. <laughs> Bitch owed me some money, I need to get my money back. Listen, okay, let me say this. Yes, I still have problems, my love. Yes, baby. Sometimes I'll put my meds in my robe pocket and forget. Shot a bitch, didn't know what. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding, I'm not gonna play because I want you to know. If I forget to take my meds, I'm manic as hell, God damn. And uh, like I said, I'm, use, I'm losing my short term memory. So if she doesn't remember what I say, I treat, the, treat her like a slave, I beat her. Got a bull whip out and beat the sh <laughs> that bitch up against a tree and beat the sh I know I'm, I'm crazy, Anima. Uh, and Pumpkin, listen to me. But I'm doing all right. It's hard. My personality breaks through that fucking medication. Yeah, uh huh. I can get manic. My, my shrink will call me. She'll see me on one of them TV shows and one of those interviews. She say, you sound like you're hypomanic. I said, fuck you, bitch, I am. <laughs> uh, 25 years of your ass. But she's right! She had to talk me down the other day. She had to talk me down, honey. I got a stalker, dumb fuck. How the fuck you gonna come for me, nigga? <laughs> your ass, he, he, I got the police everywhere. I was at the African American Museum. Sister girl walked up to she said, Miss, <laughs> they had a picture and everything, like some shit out of a movie. Because you know they don't play in DC. So she walked up to me. I got out of the car. She said, Miss Lewis, sister girl, I'm Corporal James. And I will be at your hip tonight. I said, Carl, sister girl. <laughs> she said, my bad. Okay, uh, white people trying to run shit. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you poor bastard. Come on, one more question. I'm taking 18 more. <laughs> yeah, I love me. Okay, 
What, baby? Okay, well, I want to just say... I love you. I love you, baby. Okay, so <laughs> I do have a quick, I want to make a statement, but I also want to say, Church was my favorite episode ever on Blackish. Oh, that was, oh yeah, that I did was, that shit, you didn't did I? That great. But listen. Yeah. Church is some bad shit. Let me get one more question. Okay. Now, listen to me. Who's got something real important like he did? Come on now, it's got this, the last one. Don't F around. Okay, where you at? All right, stand up. Let me hear you. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. All right, so and I had to read it to you. The other day, I listened to you on Quest Love's podcast. Yes. And there were two things that you said that stuck with me. Yes. Um, some mornings when you're not feeling that shit, you sing a song to yourself. Which one was it? I don't remember. You, you, okay, you, it's all right. You didn't hear one listening, motherfucker. Go and on. Then, I, got a, I got a quote for you. I love how they're going to say she called everybody a motherfucking in love. <laughs> I did not you look. I play. I want, I want you to know something. Ain't nothing but love in me. Hmm? You hear me? Like I told you, I've been cussing since I was five. Go on. You said to him, if the, if the toxic shit is going on, the lies and the chaos, child, get the fuck out of there. And I wrote it down, like on my post note, because I was trying to get the fuck out of work. But my <laughs> question for you... <laughs> What now? Come on now. My question for you in this yeah, moment. My when that toxic shit and that chaos is your family, how do you get out of it? How do you... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. If that chaos is your family? Yes. That's my question. Shit. <laughs> family will fuck you up, won't they? Listen to me. Listen to me. This was... Shut the fuck up, bitch. I don't know what you're saying. Now listen. I don't know who you are. I'm sorry. I hope you... <laughs> Look, she laughing. Shut the fuck up. Listen, y'all. Listen, listen, this is the last answer, and then I want to. I'm listening. Go ahead. Let me, let me ask you this. This is, um, okay, it was, shh. How what? Family. Family. Oh, okay. This was a big one for me. First of all, you can mail Christmas presents. They will fuck with you on a holiday, won't they? <laughs> but if you must go home, be an observer. Hmm? Don't get so fucking involved. Do a puzzle. Look. Look at me. Let it be. If that nasty ass sister is nasty, she gonna be shame that shit gonna change, huh? If your mama can't stand you, what the fuck? You coming home for Christmas don't mean shit. <laughs> Sit back and hush and be an observer. Just smile when somebody come in. Be nice. Don't try to change them. That's not going to happen. You forgive yourself. You look in the mirror every morning. You look into your own eyes. And you say over and over again, I love myself until you mean it. Stand there until you mean it. The tears are going to come because you know you don't. Very few people do. Hmm. What's that last question? I know I got to okay, go, and, but hold on. And then you have something else for us. Yeah, right? I got something. So very, very, very quick. That's on the last right. Question. Go ahead. Very quick. Come on now. Um, my question is like, with your manic, like your mania, like you feel things very strongly yes, up or down. Yes. But you're also an activist. So like, how do you stay motivated and don't get compassion fatigue when you feel like our, our losses so strongly, especially like with 9-11 and with Trump winning and all the things that- How do I keep the, the do anger stay, down? How do you stay, like, how do you um, like stay motivated and like don't let the, the lows really oh, impact honey, your, your I activism? Oh, honey, I care. I care about the next generation. No, no, no. Our ancestors took two knees in the cotton field. We got a right to take one. I'm getting ready to go after the athletes, too. I'm going to say, you fucking kneel down. You kneel with him. Don't you leave him by himself. Oh. I'm getting ready to do a big protest. I'm going to have women lay down in every major motherfucking city and block the fucking traffic at 5 p.m. Shut this motherfucker down. 
10 year olds, 11 year olds, 12 years old gonna start putting coke hang, uh, coat hangers up inside. Somewhere in the low south where no, nobody know after, right after her uncle raped her. You motherfuckers. You think we going back? What you wanna do, burn us at the stake again and call us witches? Y'all better watch that handmaiden tail shit. Cause that's what them motherfuckers want. They gonna put you in sheds and fuck them, fuck you when they feel like it. Ooh, okay, that's it. That's a good note to stop on. But listen, <laughs> listen, and on that happy note, listen, last thing. I have some good news. Shut up. And then, and then you see these white people get me, get me up. <laughs> Fucking with these white people tonight. <laughs> I love doing that shit. Listen to me, cause y'all, we have to laugh at that racism shit. It'll fuck you up. So listen, I got some good news. <laughs> Two days ago, I got a call in DC. It was a young man, he said, my name is, you know, John Williams. I am Kamala Harris's assistant. Once again, how the fuck did you get this name? <laughs> FBI, bitch. So wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, hey. He said, uh, Miss Lewis, the Congressional Black Congress wants to honor you. All right, now you better know this song. This is my finale. Come on up here so you can get them real good. Who Y'all got the books? Yeah. Here, come up here, boom. I'll come to you and then go out to their crazy asses. All right, <laughs> listen to me. Uh, this is gonna go online. So after I, after, when I point to you, all you guys say is, hey, and, rap, and put your books in the air. Okay, just go, hey, and then go, hey, okay? You ready? Y'all with the books, go over there so you can be seen. I want to see these books up in the air. Go, 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 quick. Here come the white people, run. <laughs> run, yes, it's all. Okay. The British are coming, huh? Ready? All right, here we go. Don't fuck up. I got two seconds, you hear me? Here we go. Uh, I like the books going. Can you get them if they're, I think it's better to. Yeah, stay down. All right. At least cheap ass people ain't bought no book. <laughs> Dumb ass Nancy. Here we go. I know. Ready? And I'll see y'all later. You've been a great audience. <laughs> and I want to thank you tonight. Yes, ma'am, I want to thank you and you, and you, and you, and you, okay? Here we go. I'm shy. <laughs> he just laughing, how you doing, boo? You love me, don't you? You cook food. I want none of that shit. I tried one of them Philly steaks, tastes like shit today. I don't even eat beef. I said, I said go get me more. Stop talking, goddamn it, here we go. Slave. Here we go again. <laughs> oh my God. You poor bastard. <laughs> Baby, did she clap, buddy? Clutched up. That is so cute. You're adorable. <laughs> Here we go. I hope you got that on film. Here we are. Three, two, one, action. These fools told me to rap for my book. Hey! So I tap, tap, tap for my book. Hey! Real lips for my book. Hey! Titties and hips for my book. Hey! I hit a high note for my book. Hey! Now you walk for my book. Hey! Rub a pump pump for my book. You bitches better run for my book. Hey. 
I got a plate and a pig, cause my book gonna be big. All together, with me, hold it, we gonna do this. I wanna hear a note, I better hear some harmony. Y'all black, goddammit, sing. And that white lady, you sing too. Okay, I'm gonna go, my book gonna be big, and hold it till I cut it off. You hear me? Ready? My book gon' be big. Yeah, yeah. 